Welcome to our review on ecosystems. Now, the first thing we actually need to do before we can really get stuck into this topic is to understand a few of the key terms that we're going to use throughout the next few videos. So the first one is the ecosystem, which is just all of the living organisms and the physical conditions in an area. If we're talking about the community, then that's just the organisms within the ecosystem. The habitat is the area in which the organisms live. If we talk about a producer, then we're talking about an organism that can make their own food by photosynthesis. And good examples here are things like plants and algae. If we talk about a consumer, these are the organisms that can't make their own food. So in order to get energy, they've got to eat other organisms. And so that's any animal you can think of, really. And then the last one is decomposer. And the decomposers are the ones that gain energy by feeding on dead or decaying matter. When we're talking about decomposers, these are microorganisms. And a common question that they do like to ask you on the exam is give examples of the decomposers. And all they're looking for there are two words, bacteria and fungi. And what these decomposers actually do is they're going to break down or decay any dead organic material as well as any urinal feces that's lying around. And as a result of this process of decay, then the minerals that were present within that organic material, the urine and the feces, end up being returned to the soil. One word that we do need to be aware of is the word saprophyte. Now a saprophyte is one that feeds on dead material or waste and the way that they do this is by releasing enzymes onto the surface. So the enzymes from inside them, they secrete outside and then it sits on the surface of that dead material. The enzymes then digest it and the organism just absorbs those digested nutrients. The second type of organism that is very important here is a detritivore. Now, go careful not to mix up decomposers and detritivores. Detritivores are small animals and their purpose is to speed up decomposition by breaking organic material up into very small pieces. So when that happens, what we've done is we've created a much larger surface area that the decomposers, the bacteria and the fungi, can then work on. And as a result of the combination of these two, we have a faster rate of decay. So three examples of our little detritivores are in the pictures there. We've got our earthworms, which will actually consume leaves and then release smaller bits of leaves that then our decomposers can break down. The woodlouse, which as its name suggests, does the same thing with wood and maggots, which will do the same thing with animal material. We do need to know about the factors that would affect the rate of decomposition. So if we're looking at a question that asks us how we could increase the rate of decay, then we need to specify that the temperatures need to be warm. Now, don't say high temperatures, because remember, these are living things. Therefore, enzymes are contained within them. So if we've got high temperature, the enzymes will be denatured and therefore it won't work. If the temperature is too low, then what we find is the enzymes are much slower. Therefore, they're less likely to collide with the substrate and therefore the rate of decomposition will be low. So warm temperatures is the right phrasing. We need it to be moist because we need a certain amount of water available, because what we actually find is that if there's no water, then those reactions won't be taking place. And finally, we need plenty of oxygen available. So these aerobic conditions because that's going to allow the microorganisms to respire and therefore they will carry out decomposition. If we don't have the oxygen and therefore it's anaerobic, that's going to prevent most forms of decomposition. So in a question that asks you, how can we increase the rate of decomposition? Warm temperatures, moist conditions, aerobic conditions.